Hi guys, welcome to another Ask Abdella where I answer the questions that you send on my Instagram or here on YouTube. I'm excited for this month's questions. It's quite some questions. So without further delay, let's get into it. Question number first, did Everson's mom give you any pet name or did your parents give him any sweet names? Um, Everson's mom sure did not give me any names. She just called me Mole. Uh, but my parents sure did. My mom, uh, so my parents called my brother Babu and me Chotu, like from growing up. And now they call Everson Mono. So it's Babu, Chotu and Monu and I am certain that whenever my brother gets married and I have a sister-in-law she'll also get some cute name. Moving on to the next question. Hi Eka, hello. Uh, how how are you doing? Uh, hope you're doing... <laughs> what am I reading? <laughs> hi Eka, hi. I uh, hope you are doing well. Being a Christian is listening to movie songs is a sin. Um, I think anything that your conscience does not allow is a sin. And uh, when I say uh, your conscience, it means the nudging voice of the Holy Spirit, which is telling you that, hey, this watching or this listening does not seem right. Because there are times that we see things and we hear things uh, and not just terms of songs right even terms of gossip or things like that we suddenly has that nudge that this does not feel right so yeah but i would also say that sin consciousness comes by the fall and comes by the enemy but jesus is here to give us redemption from all that we think that we are captive of I hope that helps. Um, next question. How is your relationship with your mother-in-law? Good to know for newbies. Um, I think um, it's good. <laughs> I don't know how to explain. It's good. Um, lately, not lately, I've just done, this is my second Ask of Della since I moved to US. So last one was a lot about mom. And I, I get that when you say that for newbies, I think we share a good relationship. Uh, even though we have moved out of the house, I think it's only have gone better. I certainly care a lot about uh, her desires and stuff because uh, she grew up sacrificing a lot. So even the last vlog, right, uh, of us going to Branson's and doing that whole show, I know she always wanted to do and then we are planning a trip in November together. So it was like, should we do it? Should we not? And I was like, I remember we were in a park one day and I was like, mom, we need to do it. And I was like, you want somebody to drive? My husband will drive and I'll drag. <laughs> He will not be dragged. He would be happy to do things. And so is Monsi. Like both of them are willing. They love mom and they're willing to do. But they just won't just do it. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it better. It's not. Uh, so I think I'm just the like, let's do it. We can do this. This is possible. And yeah, we did it. So I do care a lot about her. And I want her to like ha have a happy life ahead as long as she is on earth i always want her to feel loved and belonged and do all the things that she wants to do and i think um she loves me too and i'm aware of it it's not the so if we are comparing right if it's the kind of warmth and love i feel like how i used to feel with my mom no uh I don't feel like, oh, I can lay on her lap and everything would disappear. Maybe over the years, I would have that relationship. But I have just met my mother-in-law nine months ago, even though I've been married for like three plus years. And same is for her. So I think it's a growing relationship, but we love each other. That's true. Okay. Next question. Your skincare routine. I wish I had one. There is no skincare routine. I just wash my face every single uh, day, uh, if that counts. I use, currently using CeraVe uh, 
So uh, when, so there is CeraVe that I use in the morning to wash my face and then in the shower I have like a Neutrogen uh, something something uh, face wash <laughs> literally uh, and then uh, for cream or something uh, I use uh, the, I started using the snail mucin I don't know if that does something and then I've always used this uh, Pons Hydra something something some gel one pons ka that I use for a long time but I'm not doing any skincare only if you see past say you will know but I don't really have a skincare routine yeah but I don't sleep with makeup on I don't wear makeup every day but whenever I do I don't try so far haven't slept ever with makeup on next question also, I want to say it's not because I'm conscious of my like face and all. I just don't want makeup on my bed sheet and pillow covers. And what if they don't go? I love my bed sheets and comforter. So I think that motivates me. Okay, moving on to next question. What? Okay, do you hate uh, uh, slash dislike uh, Akshay Matthews or anything you like or anything you like about him? Okay, I don't know. Um, I feel like I should put this as the title of uh, the ask, this Ask of Della would be such a clickbait, but should I do it? Maybe I will. If I did, you know already. Uh, but I don't know what and when I have done something or said something that this has translated that I would hate him or dislike him. Uh, I love him. Akshay is for, to me, I know Akshay for like uh, since 2015, 2016 and he been, of course, first of all, he's younger to me, even though he's tall. Is he taller? I, he is taller than me. Uh, but he's such a sweet kid. I won't call kid because he's not like, he's gonna be a father now. But one thing that I've not seen him in changing is regardless of how much he has been known he is still grounded that's something very beautiful about him still other if he's in the room he'll always address you as didi or bhaiya and i'm not saying jo log didi bhaiya nahi bolte wo log humble nahi ho kuch but i've seen that in akshay that he has not lost it like i've seen him literally when he was a kid I was a kid too, but just a few years elder than him and I've seen him grow and I would just say that I am proud of his growth, but I have never seen uh, him like the fame getting to him or getting known getting to him or being in America getting to him, any of that. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I really love him and like him and yeah. Uh, I think one of, since we are talking about Akshay, one of the sweet memories that, I don't have a lot of memories, but one of the memories that's like, like gone into your core memories that I have with him is one, once we were both in Sholapur and I don't, I think daddy and mama had gone outside and it was just me and him and Ajia Joba and we were just sitting in Studio Portico, which is the studio that is there in uh, Past Amit's house and uh, i was just snacking on some snack and then he's like ye kyu kha rahi ho aap kuch healthy khaya karu ye chips chips nahi khana chahiye and all of that he's very healthy which i'm glad is it's a good thing and then i i said i'm hungry and then he goes down and then he is like okay mai bread omelet banate aap khaoge kya and then he went down, he made me a protein milkshake, which I was not the biggest fan of, but I was melted that he did. And then he made bread omelette or bread nahi tha to roti omelette kuch to bhi lekar aaya tha. But just for him to do that for me, it's not that like we are super close and we are like siblings, but he did that just because I should not snack and he wants me to do healthy. There's a lot of people who say that, but he went ahead and cooked something and bought for me. I don't think uh, like my own brother have done it but that was really sweet and I if by any chance Akshay Matthews is seeing it I love you Sunny and uh, yeah I don't dislike him or hate him I'm sorry if anything I said on the internet or did I don't think I've ever did anything oh I just posted once a reel with him I don't know if you're like 
whatever it is i love akshay matthews i don't hate him that's the point okay next question your relationship is truly a blessing for me thank you so much i'm glad uh could you give the best biblical relationship advice i don't know if i can give the best biblical relationship advice but i think what we heard or commonly hear people say that keep jesus in the center there is nothing more important than you both doing your life with jesus have him at the center of everything not just your spiritual life but your private life your financial life your social life even your sexual life and you're like in marriage uh i don't i think people don't speak about it but everything in every area keeping god the center of it everything branches out for through him god for me and i think that's very important it's uh important that you pursue jesus separately and he pursue jesus separately but it's also very important that you both pursue jesus together and pray pray together as much as you can and yeah i think those things would be something that i would say out of my experience okay next question when are you coming to uh canada you know what i was going to come in november to canada but now it's been cancelled so i'm not coming to canada but maybe next year sometime uh but of course it's neighboring a uh, country and uh, because i do have a green card i have an easy ex- access to go to canada so yeah maybe next year but i love you abin you send me this <laughs> uh question okay next question praise the lord aka praise the lord uh what do you do when you feel distant from god i think uh separation is a lie and uh it's not that god has separated it's just the illusion of separation uh that we feel like so there are times that we say that the presence of god was so evident in this place or i felt the presence of god it's not that the presence of god was not there when you were chilling watching tv or just being in your house or when, right now when i am here talking to your camera and all of you it's not the presence of god is not here it is here it's just that me becoming aware of it so it's completely on me if i want to be aware of the presence of god or i just want to be unaware of it and live in a lulu uh so i i think just going back to the truth that god does not distance himself from me god loves me and wants me and is very much interested in me and uh yeah just just that knowing that jesus did not die on that cross paid a price for the entire a human race to keep them distant from him he told the whale that you can come close and we can do this life together with jesus so yeah it it's only the illusion that the enemy tries to bring but turn it around with the truth that you speak uh and get from god's word okay uh next question how is life after moving out of india it's very hard <laughs> um it's be- even though i smile it is there are days uh it's bahut kuch change ho gaya hai yaar <laughs> matlab dekho mera emotions my hindi ke- <laughs> comes out in my emotion but a lot has changed and uh, i i am now in a place ki chalo theek hai this is us this is life but i think it's harder for me because i was one of those people who never wanted to come to us so that could also be the reason i am not saying ki uske alawa cheeze nahi hai but i feel like that could also be the reason that it took me so long to like mentally come to a space and there are still times i feel low because now i'm not i have not started working a lot of times i spend alone at home so it's not easy uh, i wouldn't say that, like of course there are parts and things that i love uh, i i love the skies here uh, yeah that's what i've loved so far but it's been hard uh it's been hard and i think maybe one more year into this uh i'll be better but it's been hard so far okay next question 
um is working in india better or in abroad what about living cost and the environment there i think what i've heard from people i had bad experience i spoke about it before that the last job i did in the school in hyderabad called new york academy i had the worst experience uh but and i um i remember there was one place that my husband worked in india and he also didn't like the work environment and then he saw me going through what i went through and i was like i was like he's like i have worked so many so much in us and i've never felt the way that people feel here and i think the work culture is so much better in us even though i have not started working so it's not like my t- don't take my word to it but what i've seen uh people love uh going to their jobs here and it's easier and it's not that agar your shift is 9 to 5 5 o'clock you clock out your manager would say ask you to clock out india mein bas lage pade agar 5 o'clock tum nikal gaye to log puch rahe kyun nikal rahe 5 o'clock are mera shift khatam ho gaya those kind of things yes and uh, li- cost of living of course america is expensive I'm not just comparing to Indian. Of course, the recession के वजह से a lot has has hit this country. So the cost of living has went up. I don't think the salaries or the income of people have went up that high according to the cost of living. Uh, people say I live in Texas, that is better. California and all is super expensive. So don't know about that, but. Yeah, that's there. Next question. Um how do you deal with abusive and toxic parents as a Christian? Uh thankfully I had super super nice parents growing up. It was a very loving and wonderful environment that I grew up in with loving parents of fear God who uh introduced us to jesus in the most beautiful way never forced religion on us and all those kind of good things so i don't know if i am the perfect person to give you an example of how to deal with toxic parents because i did not have one but i feel like god i also believe that god does not give you anything that god has not already given you the strength to deal with because i feel like if i had toxic parents or if i had bad parents the kind of emotional person that i am or the kind of human that i am i would have lost it long back if i had toxic parents i would have ended my life like i am 200% sure about this uh, but i feel like even the people who have it have the grace uh, god gives them the grace to do things like that and there are parents who are hard to do life with i thought growing up i always felt that everybody's parents are like my parents and then i grew up like grew grew up and moved out of the house and saw other uh, friends of mine and their relationship with their parents and it was not the nicest and i realized not everybody is having an amazing childhood and upbringing and parents who love them uh yeah i would just say that god has given you the grace to deal with them and do life with them and i just pray that god leads you even more to be nicer to them uh i i just feel like it is in the inside of you god has given you the strength to deal with them and just be a blessing and i have also seen because of good kids toxic parents coming around and their hearts changing and their lives changing so you just be a reflection of jesus to your parents if they are toxic as christians you be good children as a christian you change the narrative and because of you changing it will heal their hearts in ways and heal their life in ways you cannot imagine i hope it helps next question Uh what is that you have learned with God on your side while everything around you changing drastically Um I think it's pointed to my life right now when everything changed um when I moved to US one thing I was certain was uh, it it I might talk about it some other day because it's a set of events that have led me to be here in US and I know that with so much of hard heart i had towards us if i'm sitting to here today in us 
I know that God brought me here. Nothing, nothing could, like, even though there were hard things, so much changed. I was emotional. I went to, a, I went to turmoil of emotions and sadness and I still go some, some days, I sit and cry. There are things like that, but not a day, nothing has so far come and told me and I have believed that this is not God who brought me here. I know that. This is certain that Jesus brought me here. The way that life has panned out so far also, I know that God has got me here. So that one thing that I hold on to is God has got me. And he's a good father. He will take care of me regardless of if I have friends or not. If everything that I had, I've left behind. If I have a job or not. If I have a, my own car or not. Like, I'm just naming things, right? But I know God brought me here and God has got my back. And God just is there. So, even though it's a hard season, it's good to know that you're not doing it alone. It's good to know that even when nobody is understanding what you're mentally going through, God is there knowing every bit of it. It's the same Jesus who knew he will resurrect Lazarus, wept when he got the news of him passing away. So just because God will, I know God will t bring me out and I, I just am saying, right, there, I don't know if there would, I, there would come a time that I would fall in love with you as, but till then, I feel like whatever I'm feeling right now, Jesus is feeling it with me. And that is a good hope to know that he does not distance himself from me, uh, no matter whatever happens or whatever changes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> well, guys, this, this Ask of Tela has been like a lot of serious questions. Um, uh, next question. Uh, how is America? How is... It different from India did the accent switch it I don't think that accent switched yet but there would be things it will switch eventually if I'm gonna live here uh, how is America how is it different from India I would say that I moved to Dallas and it is elevated India because I remember the first two weeks that I was in the country I did not see one American which from by which I mean one white American and uh, it was crazy and then eventually I saw people and uh, yeah so I think it's elevated India you get everything that you get in India of course on a higher price you get mandi you get biryani you get haleem you get pakora cholo bhature everything and people clothes like I Plus, I go to an Indian church, so that's not even helping much. But um, we serve in an Indian church, so I'm happy about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think those those are the things that I feel like at least if I would have moved somewhere else, it would have been a drastic change. But I feel like Dallas is an elevated India. If somebody wants to be in America but still wants to feel like the bits and parts of India, I think Dallas is the place to start from. Uh, of course, the roads are different. The roads are better. The traffic, nobody honks here. Honking is like you abusing somebody. So if somebody has honked you, it's like, what's wrong? And so nobody is honking in traffic. Uh, the sky is clearer. I love, love, love the sky here. Yeah, there, there are good things about the country. And it is different in few things. But I still love India. Okay. Next question. What is your education qualification, sis? Uh, I didn't do much studies. I am a graduate. I just did my bachelor's. So that's my last education. I don't know if I'll study more. But yeah, that's my qualification. Didi, aapke always smiley face ka kya I don't know, Rasta kuch bhi nahi by God's grace, by parents' genes uh, and God's grace, I got a face which has a good smile. I know I have a good smile by God's grace, so I'm just <laughs> grateful. Uh, next question. Didi, if... <laughs> I don't know why I read it that like that. Didi, if you had a chance to go back into your past life 
and set one thing right what would what would be that um i am somebody who totally believe that everything that uh happened brought me to where i am today but if i still have to say i would say that growing up i paid a lot of attention on people compared to my education uh and i regret that like i have invested into people a lot and i now like as a 29 year old person regret that i'm not even so talking about peak of my education even in my school life later school life in my 11 12th uh yeah i have just gone ahead and been there for people and just i have been too much there for people and just sold out <laughs> sold out for jesus and sold out for people i was like that one category and i realized none of those people are part of my life do i regret that uh, was it all nice when it was yes everything was nice but then looking back the realization of you're the only one who's going to live with you for the longest so i think invest in yourself love on yourself uh and love on your family thankfully i was always close to my parents and my brother but i think this one thing if i would i would just go back like i i really had a bad patch in 2015 2016 um yeah so just not letting people uh loving on people but not just getting sold out for them and doing things at the cost of your hours of studies or your hours of doing things for yourself yeah i would just want to change that but i can't and i don't regret loving on people but <laughs> yeah if you ask okay last question how to prepare yourself for marriage the bigger picture as a woman once you're engaged um i think after you're engaged there's a lot of things happening towards your wedding and it go it can get to your nerve uh at least for me the whole from engagement to the wedding it was like again i was doing everything by myself Uh, because i was in hyderabad by myself and we were doing the wedding there but what i would say that even though with everything that chaos is happening right now you know that you're going to get married i just say that spend as much time one on one with jesus as much as you can uh go out with friends and family spend time with your mom dad and siblings Oh my goodness I cannot stress on this enough spend time with your parents and family and even when you get a wonderful spouse and if you like get to meet your parents of I can guarantee you 200% it does not stay the same so just spend time with them if you can I love on them those are those those would be the things that will prepare you for marriage like just receiving love and being full and abundant of love and then you have some love to give be filled with jesus is love be filled with the love that comes from family yeah i would say all those kind of things would just help you uh be prepared for marriage and marriage is a everyday thing so as you go by you learn a lot it changes every day it gets more beautiful but you learn on the go i think marriage is that nobody can give you keys to it just that focus on god love on god love on family love on your spouse of your auntie for now okay that's about it we're done with this month's ask of dela this was felt like a heavy and uh, very intense questions but i hope something i said helped you if it did please let me know in the comments what it is and i know that a lot of you who watch my video have not subscribed to the channel So please do subscribe to the channel it makes my heart happy uh so please do that and i'll see you next time with another video till then take care uh i love you and god loves you more and that's it bye